Should you ever work for free as a music producer or audio engineer? Some people will say, no, absolutely not. If you're doing work for someone, you should be paid for your services. And I fully agree with that, except for the fact that in order to get work, you need to have worked. What I mean is, if you work in a creative service business, no one cares where you went to school, no one cares how good you say you are, People want to know what you can actually offer them, and in a creative service business like music production, video production, or graphic design, that usually comes in the form of a portfolio or a demo reel, something you can play for a potential client, ideally in a similar genre to their style of music. And so if you don't have any examples of your work, it can be challenging to land potential clients for the first time because there's a lot more risk for them paying for a service without knowing what you can truly provide. So there's two kinds of free work that we do in the music business. There's interning when you're just getting started, and for my example earlier, what I'll call portfolio building. So story time, I wanna talk about interning. Now, I've had a couple of internships, the good kind and the bad kind. And let's start with the bad kind, it's more fun. I'd just come home from school, uh, moved back in with my parents, and I was teaching guitar to make a few bucks, and I'd been reaching out to a few different recording studios to try and get an internship. I thought it'd be a foot in the door, lead to paid sessions, and maybe eventually a job. And eventually a studio replied to an email and offered me an internship a few days a week. This studio was in Brooklyn, and I lived out on Long Island, so my commute was at least an hour. Not terrible, but factor in parking, and it took some time. The first week there, there were no sessions. The studio was nice, a couple of different control rooms that shared a big live room, but seemingly no clients. And I thought, maybe it's just a slow week, but the next week, same thing. And it was late fall going into winter, and so on top of some normal intern tasks like wrapping up cables, organizing the studio, I was asked to weather seal the windows. Now, I'm not against hard work, but at this point it was clear that I was truly working for free. See, internships are meant to be learning opportunities. That's the exchange. There might not be a monetary exchange where you work and get paid, but you work and you learn. And at my first internship, I was only doing the work. Without any active sessions going on at the studio, I wasn't doing any learning. I wasn't getting any opportunities to grow, and so I knew that it was time for me to move on. I don't consider that first internship a waste of time. During downtime, which there was a lot of, the owner showed me how to use the consoles, and so I did get some good hands-on experience, but nothing really practical with artists or recording bands. But I put it on my resume, and I felt prepared and confident when reaching out to bigger studios. Eventually, I heard back from a studio called Tainted Blue, which couldn't have been more of a dream studio. It was the penthouse suite in a multi-studio building in Times Square, gorgeous wooden live tracking room, SSL console, everything you could dream of, they had. The owner was a producer, songwriter, guitar player who made pop music centered around live instrumentations like guitars and real drum recordings layered with electronic instruments. This could not have been more aligned with my skill sets and musical style, and I would go on to shape my whole career around exactly that, working with singer-songwriters and blending live instruments with modern pop. Tainted Blue was different, night and day from my previous internship. Sure, there were traditional intern responsibilities. I cleaned up after we hosted parties, I reset the studio after sessions, which there were plenty of, but I also got to assist on a ton of sessions. I got to see how a producer interacts with an artist, makes them feel comfortable, get good takes out of a singer, how to mic drums. I got extremely comfortable working on the SSL console with hundreds of channels, and I got to assist on a session with John Legend and Frank Ocean, which led to a songwriting opportunity with Frank Ocean. But I left Tainted Blue after about eight months, which might seem crazy after all the great things I just said about my time there, and they were. The problem was I wanted to spend all of my time there, but I was still an unpaid intern. So I had an honest conversation with the owner about my future at the studio, and the reality was he was an engineer himself, he had two engineers on staff, and it just wasn't an option to hire another one. So long story, thanks for sticking around. Interning, is it worth it and should you do it? I think a strong yes, but with a few rules. As soon as you feel like you're not getting your end of the deal, you have to move on. If you're not learning, getting hands-on experience, or actually building your portfolio, you have to move on. If you want to find a way to make music your career and not a hobby, you've got to know when to stay and when to go. And hopefully my story helped you identify some of those different situations. When's the right time to stick around? What are you gaining from this experience? Or should you start looking for the next thing? So now I want to talk about the other type of free work, which is literally saying, sure, I will work on your project 
for zero dollars. And the only time I think that you should do that is to build out a demo reel. I mentioned in the beginning of this video that it's hard to get work if you haven't had any work, which can be a bit of a paradox, right? You can find an artist you really like and you'd say, I'd love to work with you, I'm a music producer. They say, great, can we hear some of your work? And you go, I don't have any. And this continues over and over. So you need your first client to help you land your second. And this is where I think it's beneficial to work for free. But you need some form of an arrangement. It's important that you know what genres of music you work best in. Now, I do my best work when I make pop, rock, singer-songwriter, and house music. So I found artists to work with in each of those genres that would help me build my portfolio so that the next time I meet an artist in any of those genres and they ask to hear my work, I had some examples to show them. Now, I don't do my best work if I work on rap music. I don't really listen to it often. I don't know what's current, what the trends are. So it would be a waste of my time to work on that genre for free because it's not helping me build my demo reel. I'm not doing my best work for myself or the artists, and it's not gonna help me land future business. So that's number one. Make sure whoever you're working with for free is gonna be in a genre you do best and will be something you're proud of to show off later and help you land future clients. Number two is when you're finished with the project to give the artist an invoice. Show them you're a legitimate professional. Keep track of your hours, time spent recording, editing, mixing, and break it all down from them on an invoice with your rate of what you would have charged. And then at the bottom, just put a discount of 100%. Now this helps manage expectations and it assigns value to your work. It also puts your rate on paper because remember, you don't wanna be the free guy forever. Now number three is to be honest. Why are you giving them this discount of 100%? What can they do to help you in return? How can they help spread the word about you and what you're doing? Maybe that's a social media post, or maybe you know that they have a huge network of other artists that are just naturally gonna hear the song and that word of mouth is gonna lead back to you. Or maybe it's a Google review of your studio. Let them know how important it is to you that they help you with outreach in exchange for what you're recording. And it could be a little weird or uncomfortable to ask for, but you have to, especially things like Google reviews. Think about it. Someone goes to a restaurant and they have a good experience. They might tell a friend, oh, you've got to try this restaurant. But rarely do they hop on Google and leave a review. Now, if someone goes to that same restaurant and has a bad experience, those people are keyboard warriors. They head straight to Google to leave a negative review. And it's the same in the music business. You've got to ask for these reviews. And anytime I've let an artist know how much it helps with Google placement and makes it easier for other people to find the studio, they always go, oh my gosh, of course, I'd, I'd be happy to. I found that people generally want to help, especially when they're happy with the art that you help them create. And that goes for paid clients as well. So to recap, interning, yes, but only for as long as it benefits you as much as you benefit the studio. Free portfolio work, I'd say also yes, but keeping in mind the three rules. Genres you do your best work in, document it with an invoice, and make sure they know why you're working on the music for free and how they can help you in return. Because trust me, people you help want to help you. Thank you so much for sticking with me and listening to my story. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.